Welcome back to this next video in which we are discussing linear operators. Okay, so in the previous video what we saw is that if we have a linear operator which is acting on a finite dimensional vector space and sending it onto itself, then we can always represent that linear operator by a matrix. Okay, and the way that this works is that if our uh, vector space that's involved in the linear operator is finite dimensional, we can always find a basis for it. And then what we can do is associate with all the vectors in the vector space for both the domain and codomain, we can associate them all with coordinates. And then what we can do is we can come up with a matrix which will map any coordinate vector onto the coordinates of the vector that it will be mapped onto by uh, the linear operator. And that's what this matrix A is. Now the components then of the matrix A are completely and utterly determined by which basis you're using. They're completely and utterly dependent on that. What we're now going to question is if I want to suddenly change the basis that I'm using, okay, I get fed up of one and I want to now move to using another, how can I transform my matrix which is representing my linear transformation to get a new matrix that is still representing the same linear operator, and I apologize for saying transformation before, okay, that's still representing the same linear operator but is now going to have to have different components because the coordinates that I ascribe to each vector in the domain and codomain vector spaces have fundamentally changed. So now obviously this matrix which is swallowing a coordinate and spitting out another coordinate it's going to have to change too. Okay, so let me write something down to properly communicate the scope of the problem. Okay, so we've got our linear operator T here, which is a mapping between my vector space V and itself. The vector space is finite dimensional, so it will have a basis, okay? Uh, and uh, this is also a linear operator, so it'll obey all the nice properties of linear operators. Okay, so we had this first basis, which was the basis B, okay, which we used to give all the vectors of our vector space coordinates, and that was the vectors V1, V2, all the way up to Vn. Okay, and we had this matrix A, which could take a coordinate vector with respect to this basis from the domain vector space and turn it into a coordinate vector with respect to this basis in the codomain vector space. Okay, and this was consistent with our linear operator, i.e. the coordinate vector y is uh, the vector that the coordinate vector x would be mapped onto by this linear transformation, basically. Okay, so the vector whose coordinate vector is x would be mapped onto the vector whose coordinate vector is y in the codomain vector space by the linear operator t, and therefore the matrix is capturing the linear transformation. Sorry, linear operator. I'll keep trying to correct myself when I say linear transformation. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to come up with some new bases, b bar here, okay, and this is going to have a whole bunch of new basis vectors, v1 bar, v2 bar, all I can say is that it will have the same number of them, so you will have the same little n here, it will go up to vn bar, and of course little n is just the dimension of our finite dimensional vector space, capital V. Okay, so, now what I want then is I'm going to express all of my uh, vectors in both the domain and codomain vector space as coordinate vectors with respect to this basis b bar. Okay, so I'm going to, for every single vector in this vector space, find its linear combination with respect to these basis vectors and associate it with a coordinate vector hence. Okay, what I now want to find is what is the matrix that will take a, a coordinate vector in the domain vector space and map it onto the appropriate coordinate vector in the codomain vector space which will be consistent with the linear operator here. So what I want to find is this equation y bar is equal to a bar times x bar where these bars are the coordinates with respect to my new basis. So x bar is the coordinate vector of a vector uh, in my domain vector space with respect to the basis b bar Okay, it's being acted upon by the new matrix A bar, which is exactly what I'm trying to find. I'm trying to find A bar, and it's going to spit out a coordinate Y bar, a coordinate vector Y bar, which is the coordinate um, coordinates of um, the vector in the codomain vector space according to this basis B bar. 
Okay, right, so I just want to change the basis I'm using, but the idea is still the same. I want to be able to have a matrix representing the linear operator, taking a coordinate here and mapping it onto a coordinate here. Okay, and being consistent with the linear operator here. Okay, so what is my approach to trying to find a bar? Well, this is my approach to trying to find a bar. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start off with the coordinates of a vector in my domain vector space according to this basis b bar. Okay, now I'm firstly going to transform those into the coordinates with respect to the basis b because if I do that I can then apply this formula that I'm given. I can then say okay let's apply a, the matrix a, and that will turn you into the coordinates with respect to the basis b of the answer vector in the code main vector space. And then all I need to do is then transform this into its coordinates with respect to the basis B bar. So I'm going to use my matrix A and then just transform coordinates before and after basically to try and find this overall matrix A bar. And I'm then just going to capture all three of these processes in this new matrix A bar here. Okay, so that's my strategy for doing this then. So, what we need to discuss then is how do you actually change basis, okay? So if you have, and we'll just start with this one here, okay? So if I have the coordinates of a vector in the vector space with respect to the basis B, and I want to transform them into the coordinates with respect to the basis B bar, how do I do it? And I know I want to do it the inverse here, but we'll start by looking at this. Okay, it's conventional to start by looking at this way because this is my second basis. This is the new basis. This is the old basis. So we'll write it in terms of going from this basis to the new basis. Okay, so um, how do you do this then? How do you change coordinates? How do you change which basis you're using? Okay, well, uh, if you're not familiar with this, please do watch my earlier video in the playlist on vector spaces entitled Change of Basis. But the answer is that you can act a matrix. You can multiply the coordinate vector with respect to the basis B by a matrix which we'll call P and that will turn it into the coordinate vector with respect to the basis B bar, okay? So x is the coordinate vector with respect to the basis B, and we can turn it into the coordinate vector of that vector with respect to the basis B bar by multiplying it by some matrix P. Now let me just describe this matrix in a little bit more detail here. So this is going to be an n by n matrix, okay? And the components of this matrix are going to be rather special. So we'll have P11, P12, P1n here. Then we'll have P21, P22, all the way along to uh, P2n here. And then it'll go all the way down to Pn1, Pn2, all the way along to Pnn here. Okay, so here is my matrix. Now where do these components then come from? Okay, well these components are actually the uh, coordinates of the old basis vectors with respect to my new basis. Okay, so these old basis vectors, V1, V2, all the way up to Vn, these will have coordinates with respect to my new basis vectors. Okay, so I can write V1 as a linear combination of these barred basis vectors, basically. And that will end up being the first column of this matrix P, okay? So this first column of entries here, these are the scalar coefficients that I would have to stick in front of the V1 bar, V2 bar, all the way up to Vn bar uh, basis vectors in my new basis to get my uh, basis vector V1 from my old uh, basis, okay? Similarly, the components in the second column here these are the coordinates of the second basis vector from my old basis in terms of my new basis B bar. So these are the coefficients that I'd have to stick in front of these uh, basis vectors in my new basis to get uh, the second basis vector of my old basis and so on. So you can work your way along the columns and they'll just all be the coordinates of these uh, old basis vectors in terms of the new basis vectors. So that's where this matrix P comes from. Okay, so if you have uh, a um, vector in your vector space V and its coordinates with respect to the basis B are 
x, so this is the coordinate vector with respect to the uh, initial basis b, excuse me, and you want to turn it into its coordinate vector with respect to the basis b bar, there is this matrix p that you can just multiply uh, the coordinate vector with respect to the basis b by to turn it into the coordinate vector with respect to b bar. Okay, right, and that's actually all we need to be able to do now, okay, because if I want to do the inverse thing, if I want to turn uh, coordinates with respect to the barred bases into coordinates with respect to the unbarred bases, all that's going to be is multiplication by the inverse matrix, which will always exist because of the nature of the problem. You can always go between uh, these two coordinate systems. There will always be a solution to that, and of course, the inverse matrix of P must be the thing that does that, so that's a sort of non-formal explanation of why uh, the inverse matrix must always exist here because of the nature of the problem. Okay, so I can write then that if I have my coordinate vector with respect to the barred basis, then I can multiply that by P inverse to go back to uh, the coordinate vector with respect to the unbarred basis. So. I'm starting off with a coordinate vector with respect to the bar basis in my domain vector space. I've transformed that now into a coordinate vector with respect to the unbar basis still in my domain vector space. What I'm now going to do is act the matrix A uh, on this. Okay, That will take me onto a coordinate vector in the co-domain vector space uh, with respect to the basis B. Okay, So I've now got A, P inverse, X bar here. But now the final thing then is to transform this into the coordinates with respect to the B bar basis. How do I do that? Well, I just multiply my coordinate vector with respect to the unbar basis uh, by P. So what I now need to do is take P on this. Okay, and this then is the expression that will give me Y bar, the coordinate vector uh, in the codomain vector space with respect to this basis B bar. Okay, so what that now means then is that this expression, P A, P inverse, this is going to be my A bar, this is going to be the new uh, matrix representation of this linear operator if we are using the barred basis rather than the unbarred basis. Okay, so I just have to take this matrix P, take its inverse, and then use it to conjugate the matrix A to get my new matrix here. And this does make sense because remember, the matrix A is an n by n matrix, the matrix P is an n by n matrix, its inverse will be an n by n matrix, so multiplying three n by n matrices makes complete sense and you'll get an n by n matrix as A bar. Okay, so this does completely make sense. So that then is how you would uh, transform this matrix representation of your linear operator if you decided to change the basis that you were going to use to describe all of the vectors in your vector space uh, with respect to. Okay, so uh, with that then, we will end this video on linear operators.